If you buy a car in the US, do you really own it? No, serious question. If you buy a car, a van, or some other, I, I'm hesitant to call it vehicle because that means a different thing in the law, but if you buy a car, do you own it? Well, the answer is basically no, and I'm here to try to alleviate that, and I'm looking for help. Now, I never asked for any kind of help on my channel, and my channel's not monetized, I don't make a single penny, uh, but I'm looking for somebody in the U.S. This is only going to be applying in the U.S., unfortunately, because I know I have a lot of viewers. On my 11,000 subscribers, uh, hopefully I'll find just one person that's willing to help on this. Uh, I'm looking for a paralegal, somebody maybe in law school, somebody who wants to make a, maybe make a name for themselves in the Patriot Movement, somebody really knowledgeable about court procedure mainly. Uh, I'm looking for somebody to help me on a case. I want to file a lawsuit because I'm going to have to go through a little bit of storyline here. Because I don't have a social security number, you can't get a driver's license. I don't need to go through all that. I've done other videos about it. So I, I can't get a driver's license. So I travel freely upon the roads in my sovereign capacity. That's what I do. And certain people don't like that. Maybe some of you watching don't like it, and that's tough. But I exercise my right to travel. And when I go upon the roads, and if sometimes somebody who doesn't like what I do stops me and thinks that I have to have that driver's license or, or whatever, uh, then sometimes a lot of things happen to me, like I get put in jail, arrested, put in jail, and my van stolen. And that's happened to me now twice in the last couple of years, and that's what I need to try to alleviate now. You see, because after they run you through this system, now, now I'm not trying to find anybody to help me on the case dealing with the right to travel. I, I, I can win that case easy, this, and I get it dismissed, that's not a problem at all. But what I'm talking about here is property ownership, because I'm always having a hard time getting my van back, the place where I live, right? Because the state, now we, we, let me go through a little bit of a procedure. Most of you know in the states, this is generally how it works. If you buy a van, whether it be new or used, if you go new to a dealer, they take care of all the paperwork and then they give you a nice piece of paper that maybe, or they send you a piece of paper that looks something like this in the mail. They call it a certificate of title. It's not really a title. Look at the top, what it says. They, also don't, say, they don't say title, they say certificate of title. What does that mean? I won't get into that right now, but it's a cloud of ownership. The state, whatever state you're in, sends you this piece of paper and then the state considers you to be in reality part owner okay but in my case and people and 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 basically anybody that basically is homeless in the entire country you can't live in your van yeah that's right you can't live in your van because the state says that they own the van all right in this case but when I bought this van that I've this in question here, the one that's been stolen twice now in the last two years, the one in question, I get this fancy piece of paper from was a used one from the person who owned it before me, and he signs off on it and, and puts his date or whatever information is, is on the bottom of the form there and the, how much you paid for it, whatever. And then what most and then it gives you a bill of sale to show how much money was transacted, right? So I had the bill of sale and the original, the previous owner's certificate of title. And I had also a release of lien because he had a lien on it. So his bank gave him a statement saying there was no more lien on this property. Okay, so now most people go to the BMV and take this, these pieces of paper and say, here, uh, here's all this information. Please let me have a certificate of title in my name, right? That's normally what they do in this country. And then some weeks later, they send you this fancy piece of paper in the mail. That's usually what happens. Well, in the case of somebody that doesn't have the right information to put on the form, it's not possible. You see... Besides the social security number, and that doesn't really necessarily apply here, mostly what applies here is a valid address, a street address. Now, they, they can't accept it without a street address. I've tried. They uh, will not accept it with a post office box either. And in any, in any case, to get a post office box, you have to have a street address. Now, what most people will do in this sort of instance, they will basically make up an address or have put an address of their friends on there. So it's just a place, basically just a place where they can send that fancy piece of paper. That's essentially what they do, what most people do. If they're homeless, they don't have a home, they don't have a true address. But now when you sign that form, uh, on, the on, the, on the bottom of it, when you get ready to sign that certificate of title, it says under the penalty of perjury, all information is true and correct. Well, if you make up an address, then that's not true and correct. Now is it you're committing perjury? So I decided not to commit perjury, so I decided to try to maintain ownership of my van on my own. So I did not apply for all that paperwork with the BMV because essentially in order to get it in my name, which is in all capital letters, by the way, to take a look at your certificate of titles. It doesn't have your name or is that your name? Maybe you think it is your name. That's fine. But uh, I can't get it in my name because I don't have a proper address to put on the form without committing perjury. 
So in order to quit to not commit perjury, I decided to maintain myself the certificate of title from the previous owner, the bill of sale and the release of lien, and I traveled with that. Sometime later, uh, I got pulled over, and this was in Ohio. Now, all the states are essentially the same, so it doesn't really matter what state it is, but this is the state where the action is going to be against. And the, and the action is going to be a lawsuit, and this is where I need help from either a law student or a paralegal or somebody knowledgeable. Uh, basically, after they run you through their system, put you in jail, arrest you, put you in jail, steal your van, whatever, and then you're out on the streets without anything, uh, I try to get my van back, but basically what happens is you go to where they've stolen your van, and that's what they've done, they've stolen it, and say, hey, I need my van back, you've stolen my van. Oh, you can't have your van back unless you have, and usually they ask for three documents, or four, and they'll ask for your certificate of title in your name, they'll ask for your registration for that vehicle, they call it at that point, and your insurance on that vehicle, and also your driver's license if you want to drive it away. I said, well, I can't get any of that information. Uh, can you just give me, can you release it to me? Excuse me, I'm dropping things here. Can you release it to me uh, with, the, with this information I have here? The, the previous owner's certificate of title, the bill of sale, and release of lien. No, we can't. You have, it's, that's, the previous owner would have to come and, 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 and recover the van. Okay, so now wait a minute. I'm proving that I've owned the van, right? But the state says, or in this case, if it was a city, they're saying, or a county, they're saying, no, you, you don't own the van because it's not in your name. Do I have paperwork to show that I have purchased it? So who really owns the van? They're claiming, of course, the previous owner has to come up. So what I ended up to do, I've had to get my van, van back by trickery, and I'm trying to prevent this from happening in the future, and that's why I want to file a lawsuit. I need to find out once and for all if it's possible to own your own car. Really, that's it. Is it possible to own your own car? The uh, BMV will require all that paper. And so even if I, even without, they ha I had that paperwork with, it was in the van. They saw it. Here's all the paperwork I have to show that I purchased this van. Nope, they won't give it to me. Okay, well then are you going to cut me a check? Because, you know, the Fifth Amendment kind of says something about just compensation. Where's my check? Nope, can't get it. It's not your van. Okay, maybe, maybe they want a federal lawsuit. So they steal your van. So what do I have to do? What, this is what I've had to do in the past. I've had to have abandoned one van over this years ago. And now this one, uh, I've recovered now twice, but I've had to do trickery to get it back. Basically, I've had to sell it to somebody else with the very paperwork that they refuse to accept. The, uh, the, the, other, the, the BMV would accept it. So I sell it to somebody who has all that information. They have an address, they have social security number and all that. They get all the things done and paperwork and they come down and get it. And then when I, when, they, when I get it out of their impound yard, I purchase it back from them, basically, the same way I got it the first time. But the state will never recognize that, you see. They won't ever give me my property back. They steal your property and won't give it back. So what's the solution here? Well, there apparently there is no solution other than to force them to show you, tell them who owns that property. Because not only are they not giving it back with the paperwork that they're requiring it, they're, and when I don't, can't produce that paperwork, then they're saying, oh, you're out of luck. You can't have your property back and they never refused to cut me a check for stealing my property under the guise of uh, motor vehicle laws or statutes, really, they're not laws. And by the way, I don't need help from somebody fighting the case of driving without a license, driving without insurance, driving without registration. I can win that super easy in court, so I'm not worried about that whatsoever. I could sue them on those grounds too, of course. Where's your victim? Where's your, where's your jurisdiction? They don't have any. But that's not what this is about. This is about property rights. Now, I've already contacted the ACLU. I've already contacted various homeless advocacy groups to try to help me with this case. Nobody answers me really other than, oh, we're busy and we can't take all the cases that come to us. I understand that. So I'm looking for help. And, and by help, I, all I really need, need is help with creating the, the actual lawsuit and subsequent paperwork. I, I, don't, I can represent myself in court. I always have. And I've done federal court in, in the past as well. And I can file this myself, but I'm likely to make mistakes. And that's why I'm hoping to get somebody that's going to be a little more helpful because I'll probably screw it up. I'm just, I'm waiting my way through this process and I don't really know. It's really about court procedure. All these, it's all really about paperwork and court procedures, not really about the actual representation in court. So that's what I need help on. Anybody out there willing to help me, I need to file within the next month or two, basically, the statute of limitation runs out for the first one that happened. Well, it depends on what part of the uh, statute of limitations we're talking about here and what's involved with the case. But it's been almost two years since they stole it two years, almost two years ago. So I need to file this very soon. So anybody that is willing to help, um, I 
I have almost zero money, I'm sorry. But what I can offer you in return is if there's any monetary damages in a win, you're welcome to all of it. So we can hike it up to whatever you think we can get and we can get that and I can, I'm not looking for money. I'm looking for freedom. I'm looking for my property rights. That's what I'm looking for. It's not about money. But we can of course throw in money as damages and punitive damages. There's, there's so many things that could be thrown in there monetarily wise that could be done. And if, it's, if there's a win then I'm very gladly willing to give you 100% of those proceeds. All right. So call out for anybody out there. Please contact me, leave a, leave a message, uh, forbidden, uh, yeah, uh, let's see, forbidden knowledge at yahoo.com if you'd like, or a message below and I'll be able to get it. Uh, if you want to stick around for any updates, uh, if this video, if I keep this video up after I have help uh, and it's up for years afterwards, check the description box below. Maybe there'll be updates as to the progress of this case if you want to keep following it. And by the way, in the end, if this is all, very, if this is all, whether it's a win or lose, it'll be information for us to know whether or not we can really own property, in this case, cars. But this would, could apply also in the future to people trying to own their pro other properties, such as their homes, because this is a huge problem uh, with people losing their homes over this type of issue. But cars might be a little bit easier to deal with, so let's, let's deal with that. So anybody that's willing to help, uh, please contact me. Thanks everybody for watching, and I hope uh, somebody out there uh, sees this as a good, valid case. Thank you.